Hello, N4H and H here with the Elecraft KPA 1500. Yes, I, I did shoot a video about this amplifier a couple of months ago um, after I received it back from Elecraft for a repair, which uh, it turns out was a combination of a fault in my antenna tuner. The Ballon uh, on 160 meters could not handle legal limit. It heated up and, sh and caused a very high SWR. Uh, the amplifier, of course, uh, is supposed to protect itself, but, you know, within reason, and so it failed. However, Elecraft did some uh, upgrades to it that had uh, been um, implemented in some of the newer amplifiers, uh, of KPA 1500s, and um, so far so good. Uh, the tuner still can't handle legal limit on 160 meters, but... The amplifier, the one time I tried, it has protected itself uh, with no failure. Uh, and in fact, if you remember watching the previous video, it was the gate that failed on one of the LD Moss um, finals, not the not the power output side. They can they're capable of 1,400 watts each, and there are two of those LD Moss finals in there. Uh, but it was the gate that failed. Uh, the amount of current going to the gate was uh, excessive in that situation. So they they did some uh, what they called uh, a gain flattening resistors. They changed the values of them and uh, balanced that out a little better. And so far, so good. So, but what I want to talk to you about today is convenience. That amplifier will automatically detect what band you're on when you transmit, and it will switch to the proper bandpass filter. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Um, there's. See, I'm on 14 megahertz. Now, if I wanted to go to seven megahertz, I could, of course, press the button. But if I don't, the amplifier has a frequency counter, as it were, and it will detect what frequency I'm on, and it will, within milliseconds, it'll switch to the proper bandpass filters. Um, you know, and that's good. Now, to transmit the amplifier, uh, I have been using a... Um, RCA jack. Now you can connect it to the back of the radio, go into your radio and set the menu selection to uh, enable the transmit uh, jack, which is an RCA jack usually. And, um, and there's a relay in there that will pull the uh, keying line on the amplifier to ground and, and make it transmit. Now the only problem I found with that method is those relays will wear out and I've had one wear out on a previous rig and it was very difficult to uh, find a replacement. So I went out and bought the Heil system. See the foot switch on the floor, the boom, and a PR781. And that worked out great. I've had that for probably 15 years. So, it, you know, a long time before I even got the FTDX 5000 because I've only had it about a year. So I ran that uh, system with my FT920 for, uh, wow, yeah, probably around 15, maybe maybe a little longer than that, years. And uh, so that plugs it on, the, on an amplifier like this, the, the RCA plug from that foot switch uh, plugs into the back of the amp to literally you have a manual <laughs> trigger. You, you press a switch down when you press that foot switch and it enables the amp. Actually what happens is, there's the RCA jack coming off the microphone, and that cable routes down through the boom and then across underneath my AL80B here. And then that goes up to the radio, and then there's a little, as you can see here, a little pigtail coming off, and that connection goes down to the foot switch. That transmits the radio. There's another wire coming up from the foot switch. It's red with an RCA jack, and it goes to the back of the amplifier back there. I'm not gonna get up and get back there, but there's a, right next to where you see that uh, that uh, serial cable there is a port RCA jack you plug the keying cable into if you're going to use that method to key the amp but you'll notice the serial cable there well I'll mention that in a minute so uh, again that's you can key the amp using a foot switch you can set a menu um, selection in the radio to to transmit the amp via the relay the you want to call it a pull down relay it, you know it, it grounds the uh, transmit jack on the amplifier and that's the way I did it with the AL80B uh, the AL80B can't do QSK anyway uh, this is an older model 21 years old original tube 
uh, no failures other than the lamps and I've replaced those with LEDs uh, you can call Ameritron and they have the LEDs available so they drop right in uh, anyway so uh, the for, for a while I've, I've run the amp that using the foot switch to key it well I found out about this cable you know uh, I well I had known about it but I didn't try it at first I wanted to give the amp uh, a test drive but I finally did order this cable here. Uh, this is for Yesu rigs, uh, CBL-YAE-band key. And what that cable does is, that's what that serial cable is on the back of the amplifier. The other end plugs into the back of the rig, and I'm just gonna show you with, a, with this image up here. Uh, you'll see the arrow and the highlighted um, jack here on the back of the radio. And uh, that is the band data uh, plug or, or really receptacle. And that's a DIN cable, a DIN connection. So uh, the other end of that cable, that band data cable from Elecraft, plugs in here where you see that serial port. When I change bands now on the radio, let me go over here to the amplifier and I'll zoom in on the screen. You'll see currently it's set to the 14 megahertz band, so 20 meters. I'm going to reach over here to the radio and press the 7 megahertz button and it will switch. I'll press the 3.5 or uh, 80 meters, 70 me 75, 80 meters. So um, so the band switch, you can hear the, re the relays in there as it switches to a different bandpass filter. So that's happening automatically because of that band data cable. But the, the bonus is this band data cable also has a uh, one of the pins in there transmits the uh, amplifier and it what it does is it basically instead of using that relay in the radio to trigger the amp through its RCA jack there's a transistor in there so no moving parts so it will transmit the amp without having the having a moving part a relay that will eventually wear out some relays are only good for about 10,000 cycles can you imagine doing a full break in CW with that so uh, what's this? I'm gonna I'm on a dummy load and I'm 20 meters. Yep, 20 meter CW. So I'm gonna pan over here to where the transmit light is. And what's this? Oh, <laughs> let me put the amp and operate. There we go. When you change bands, I've got it programmed in the menu. By the way, watch watch it. I'm gonna switch back temporarily to seven megahertz. And when you change bands, you can set it in the menu to automatically go offline. And I do it that way because I'm, I'm, I'm using an antenna tuner and I don't want it to be online when I'm uh, tuning. So I have it set to automatically go to standby. That is menu selectable. Okay, now, what's the transmit light? Now, the uh, delay uh, is set here on the radio this ring here that this delay works for Vox as well as CW so if I turn that all the way to the left now watch the uh, transmit light you can see it clicking I mean it's full break-in right there so uh, I, I tend to run this knob set here if you've got an FTDX 5000 I'll tell you why since this setting here controls uh, CW and Vox delay I have found that somewhere around that 11 o'clock there um, where that little hash hash mark is um, right along in there works well for both CW and Vox so I just leave it there and it's it's a it's a good uh, happy medium for Vox as well as CW, the timing, the delay there. So yeah, the cool thing is using that band data cable, I have no moving parts involved in keying the amplifier, whether I be whether it's Vox for sideband um, or, uh, or whether it be uh, CW. So full break-in, capable with no relay chattering. Um, you know, I wasn't able to do that with the ALADB because of the big relay that triggers it anyway, so what I did back then was I set a, a big uh, delay in there for CW. And the other thing was I had to press the, uh, the foot switch at the same time that I operated CW so that the amp would trigger. 
and until I got the band data cable for the Elecraft, I had to do the same. I would press the foot switch to key the amp, and then I'd you know, use the paddles for CW. With this band data cable that also transmits the amplifier, I no longer have to even uh, press the foot switch, which, by the way, I'll admit, I'm in such a habit of doing that after all these years with that AL80B that I still sometimes press it even though I don't have to. <laughs> but no worry, it's not connected to the amplifier anymore. That, that RCA jack is disconnected um, from the, the foot switch's uh, cable is not connected to the amp anymore. So the only thing that's happening now is the, the keying signal that's coming up through that uh, quarter inch jack right there, going into the connector. That's transmitting the radio and then the, the transistor uh, that is uh, connected to that band data port uh, connector there is uh, sending the the keying signal to the amplifier. So it's really cool uh, having a solid state amp and being able to control it completely from the radio, have it change bands for you. Uh, you know, but again, if you don't happen to have the cable, you can key the amp using the RCA jack on the back and or uh, with a foot switch or from the radio's uh, relay. You got to enable that in the radio, by the way. And if you do buy this cable and decide you're gonna you're gonna take advantage of the band data uh, cable to transmit the amp, be sure that you turn off the menu option for the relay in your radio. Otherwise, you're gonna still be using the relay, or it's gonna still be clicking whether you're using it or not. So you'll still wear it out uh, eventually. So uh, just be sure to turn that off. Um, if you do decide to use one of these band data cables to key your solid state amp. As more and more people are getting these solid state amps, it's, uh, you know, that's uh, a convenience is why what I called, uh, said at the beginning of the video, it's a convenience to be able to transmit these amps and have them uh, change bands with, uh, without any moving parts involved other than the relay inside of the amp switching to a different bandpass uh, filter network for each band. So anyway, thought I'd pass that along, new edition. Uh, I've actually had this a little bit, a little while. I've been thinking of shooting a video about it, so finally did, and there it is. Uh, it's about $50 plus shipping. I think it might've been just shy of 60 bucks to get that shipped to the house. Um, and it, it came with an extra cable as well for, uh, I guess, for radios, YAC radios that have um, different uh, connector on the back, but, but the connector for the 5,000 was also in there because it has the serial on one end and the DIN connector on the other end to plug into the radio. So anyway, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. I want to thank the uh, Patreons out there for helping support the channel um, so I can continue to bring these videos to you. Uh, you know, you guys all know ham radio equipment is, is uh, not inexpensive so I can only review what I own so the more Patreons I get the more uh, gear I'll be able to review. Thanks a lot and uh, if you want to support me uh, go to www.patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash n4h-n-h my call sign November 4 hotel November hotel so that's www.patreon.com slash N4HNH. And uh, any support you can uh, provide is uh, much appreciated. I'd love to keep these videos coming. 73 from N4HNH.